Welcome to Sports Nation. This is what happens when three co-hosts simultaneously call in sick on a Friday morning. You get me and Amin El Hassan and Ramona Shelburne, who'll both join me in a bit. But first, you get to hear about how you are being brainwashed. You get to hear about how you're being conned by an industry bigger than big oil and big pharma and big tobacco in supremacy over the American mind. Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? Well, playoffs is the most important time of the year. Bears are back in the playoffs where they belong. Playoffs. That's playoff hockey. It's the playoff. I mean, you get goosebumps. Playoffs. For one, it feels great to be in the playoffs. I'm trying to get to the playoffs. Make a playoff run. Everybody talks about the playoffs being his next level. Had that playoff atmosphere. Get used to playoff basketball. Playoffs is where fans remember you. The goal of Big Playoff is insidious in its simplicity. Big Playoff wants you to believe that the winner of a sports postseason tournament is always the most impressive. Big Playoff wants you to ignore that while a single elimination tournament is a foolproof way to entertain us, it is also a bad way to actually identify the best team. Big Playoff wants you to doubt the value of the Warriors chasing 73 and 9 as if the most demanding and definitive team record in NBA history is less worthwhile than a supposedly magical ring that gets given out, like a college diploma, every single year. Listen to the brainwashed Steve Kerr, who reportedly feels less psyched about trying to break the Bulls record than Steph Curry and Draymond Green. I think it'd be cool to break the record, but we all know what our focus is. We want to win a championship. The championship goes up on the wall and records are broken. People break records. Championships last forever. Now, I respect the hell out of Steve Kerr, who is a pioneering advocate for mindfulness, for perspective in coaching. But that quote is less a theory of meritocracy and more a commercial for Zales. Making moments last a lifetime. Yes, this is how Big Playoff operates. We favor mythology over sample size. We keep infusing a championship with the all or nothing stakes of a presidential election. So in 2001, after the Mariners were upset by the Yankees in the ALCS, we completely stopped giving a crap about a Seattle team that won 116 games, even though no baseball team had ever won more. And six years later, as the Patriots were barely upset by the Giants in the Super Bowl, we considered a 17-1 and New England team both beneath history and the Giants, even though those Patriots still own the record for most wins and touchdowns ever and a record point differential of 315 even though those Giants were 10-6 and six and had a point differential of 22. Our reward for a ring is indeed immortality. But without one, our reward for some of our greatest teams is the modern dustbin of sports history. A sad 50-item Bleacher Report slideshow wherein the impeded JPEG no longer works. That fate is what threatens these warriors now. I grant you, most champions do not sit atop a throne of lies. To big playoffs credit, our winners often wind up being the best team. From Russell Celtics, to Gretzky's Oilers, to 2016 Villanova, to the most wonderfully and elaborately arrogant team in sports history, knighted just this week. In the name of UConn women's basketball, I knight Rihanna Stewart and Mariah Jefferson as the great UConn women's basketball players. <laughs> I love that so much. But you must agree that if every league held a redesign our season contest with the goal of most equitably and most objectively determining the best team in a given season, the winning entry would not include a playoff, which sounds, I must now admit, like a very un-American thing to say, in the sense that I may now be on some sort of watch list for saying it, and in the sense that this is exactly how European soccer works. In most European leagues, 20 teams play each other twice in a round-robin format. Once home, once away. And with this boring format, I must also admit, it is very hard to find fans who truly care about the game. Италия ужесточает борьбу против насилия на футбольных стадионах. Соответствующий закон, подготовленный правительством, вчера был одобрен депутатами парламента. Отныне на всех стадионах и на под... I have no idea how that Vespa got into that arena. But to be clear, as I still sense your disgust coming through this camera, I do not want to ban our tournaments. 
I fully confess that I find nothing more fun than snorting the chaos of big playoff deep into my bloodstream. I do not even blame our nation's foremost laboratory for superficial meritocracy, the Ivy League, for beginning a conference tournament next year, finally killing D1's last holdout of round-robin egalitarianism. But we should be honest about our enjoyment. We should acknowledge that our postseasons are better designed to goose TV ratings than measure skill. We should know that the people's champion need not always be the technical champion. We should realize that entertainment is why we reduce an 82-game sample to a seven-game series and a 162-game sample to a one-game wildcard round. We should embrace what Villanova coach Jay Wright told us on PTI before the Final Four last week. Yeah, you know what, Pablo? That's a good point. I don't, this tournament is definitely not about finding the best team. Thanks, Jay. The implications, of course, are terrifying. I will admit, we once turned to the postseason for the existential decisiveness of an Old Testament flood, revealing the best by wiping the weak off the face of the earth. We used to count on sports for order, as one prominent lobbyist reminded us this week. You know, losing is losing, and I don't separate. There's, there aren't different degrees of losing, not in my mind, right? You either win a championship or you're <laughs> There's no, it's very black and white to me. But it doesn't have to be that way. When it comes to picking the best among us, it is time to do precisely what Big Playoff never wanted us to. It is time to think for ourselves.